When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. This is a relatively straightforward video. What we have to do, the document stuff says identify conjugate acid base pairs. So in this case, we need to be able to look at a reaction or a formula and find out which one's the base, which was the acid, which ones are the conjugate acids and bases. So first thing we have to do is we have to find out which one donates a hydrogen and which one accepts a hydrogen. Remember, that's how we can figure out if something is an acid or a base. And the second part is whatever donates a hydrogen, its opposite will be the one that accepts the hydrogen. So the donation opposite will be the conjugate acceptor. And the opposite of the acceptor, so the opposite of the actual base, will be its conjugate donator, so the conjugate base, more or less, uh, conjugate acid. So again, this might sound a bit confusing, but it'll be very obvious once we go over the example. So here we have, first we've got hydrogen sulfate ions here, plus ammonia, and that is a reversible reaction going into sulfate ions and ammonium ions. So first thing we do, remember we figure out which one's donating, which one's accepting in the forward reaction, so in this reaction. And that happens to be in this case we have our sulfate, hydrogen sulfate ion, and you can see here it has donated a hydrogen or a proton, which means in this case this is the actual acid because it has donated. And the other one has accepted. So here's NH3. Here's NH4. So from here to over there, it has accepted a proton. Accepted proton, which makes it the actual base. That's right, so the first step done. That's good. Now we need to figure out which one is the reversible. So if we reverse it from here, since this is a reversible reaction, that's possible. So if we go from a sulfate ion, if this were to grab a hydrogen, it would go back to becoming hydrogen sulfate. So it would have grabbed that hydrogen, which means it would be the acceptor, the proton acceptor. And the proton acceptor makes it the base. So it is the conjugate conjugate base. Now, if reverse, in this case, we've got our ammonium ion. What it will do is it will actually donate. So here it's going to go and donate an actual hydrogen. It's gone from NH4 plus to NH3, which means it's got one less hydrogen, so it's donated a proton, so it's the don proton donator, donated proton, which makes it the conjugate acid. So as we expect, the actual acid will have its reverse being the conjugate base, and the actual base will have its reverse being the conjugate acid, as expected. And that was the first example. The exact second example is this one here. So we've got, I'm going to move it a bit so make it less messy. We've got hydrofluoric acid plus water. This is hydrofluoric acid this is water. That goes into fluoride ion and hydronium ion. So which one has accepted, which one has donated protons? In this case, we have a hydrogen here. We have no hydrogen here. So in this case, it has donated a proton. It's a proton, which makes it the acid. And then water would have to act as the base, so H2O here, and has one additional hydrogen here, so it has accepted a proton, gone from H2O to H3O. It has accepted a proton, which makes it the base. That's expected. And we should expect that the actual acid in the forward reaction will be the base in the reverse reaction. So the fluoride ion should act as a base if it goes in the reverse reaction. So fluoride ion going to hydrofluoric acid. In this case, it would have grabbed a hydrogen from here, it would have grabbed it and put it on its actual formula, and thereby it would be the proton acceptor. And remember, proton acceptor is a base, so it would be the conjugate, conjugate base. And the hydronium ion, since it's donated as hydrogen to the fluorine ion, fluoride ion, it would be the conjugate, 
it would be the conjugate acid since it has donated a proton. All right, so again, our acid in the forward reaction is our conjugate base in reverse reaction, and our base in the forward reaction is our conjugate acid in the reverse reaction. The last is hydrogen phosphate and water reacting to form diphosphate and a hydroxide ion. So hydrogen phosphate goes to our hydrogen, the dihydrogen phosphate. In this case, we go from having one H to two H's. So it has obviously accepted, accepted a proton, which makes it a base. Now the water molecule, it has obviously given away then. If this must be, if this is the base, then we should know that the water must be the acid. So in this case, water goes to OH. So one of the hydrogens was, is gone off because it was given to the dihydrogen phosphate. So the water itself is donating protons in this example, and thereby it becomes the acid. Again, reverse, we should expect the opposite. So we should expect that the base to act in the reverse reaction to act as the acid. So in this case, we have hydrogen phosphate would give its hydrogen, so would give one of its hydrogens in the reverse reaction to the oxide, and the reason why is to form water. So in this case, we have high dihydrogen phosphate donating a proton. So it's donated a proton, which makes it the acid. And the hydroxide group has accepted a proton, so it has accepted the proton. And that makes it the base, or the conjugate, sorry, the conjugate base. The conjugate base and the conjugate acid. So our hydrogen phosphate was our base, and the dihydrogen phosphate, when it was going the reverse reaction, acted as a conjugate acid. The water molecule going in the forward reaction acted as a acid because it donated a proton. And the reverse reaction, the hydroxide molecule, or ion, sorry, acted as a base because it has accepted a proton to form water again. Right? So at this top point, what you should be able to do is you should be able to tell which one's the acid, which one's the base. And you can do that by looking at which one's donating, which one's accepting protons. And then also be able to establish which one's the conjugate acid, which one's the conjugate base. Remember, the acid will always have a conjugate base, and the base will always have a conjugate acid. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.